The Sleep Revolution project is a large uh, multi-center project that was uh, financed by the Horizon 2020. Uh, we got uh, funding from the beginning of 2021, so the project started in March uh, 2021. And it has uh, a diagnostic part uh, and it has a treatment part. So uh, I'm mostly involved in the treatment part. I'm a work package leader of uh, work package nine. Uh, and we're going to look at the effect of myofunctional therapy in uh, uh, patients with OSA. My functional therapy is a kind of focused uh, lifestyle uh, intervention that will um, help uh, patients with OSA to, to strengthen up the muscles in the tongue and the pharynx. Uh, and it has been quite promising uh, pilot studies or an initial uh, randomized control trials published for the last 10 years. Uh, but uh, still the evidence is lacking uh, in order to, to uh, start treatment in, on a regular basis in uh, normal patients. As in all all other types of treatment, uh, it, uh, you need to do some effort to, to do this treatment. So we have uh, re reviewed the literature and uh, we have identified the eight exercises that will take approximately 30 minutes per day to do. So we have three sessions, one uh, for 10 minutes, uh, and we have also uh, slightly different content for the uh, midday exercise because some of the exercises include uh, putting a finger in the mouth with a globe so you can't do that because of social non-acceptance for that in particular in, in covid times so so the midday exercises are slightly uh, less uh, time consuming uh, but uh, it will be approximately 30 minutes per day for three months that's one of the problems that uh, all the previous studies has been um, uh, Th th therapeut-led uh, studies, and they have excluded patients that's not non-adherent, so they had not chosen a um, um, uh, treatment uh, design. They have chosen a per-protocol design, excluding non-adherent subjects. So, so we're really working with a Sleep Revolution digital platform to motivate and to help people to do the exercises. So we will have instruction videos, we will have reminders, and we will also have something we called auto-feedback. That means that you get feedback on uh, the exercises you do and also on the effect uh, that you do. So the project is for four years um, and uh, the first year we have uh, mostly revised, uh, we, uh, reviewed, I mean, the, the literature and we have uh, started uh, on the first pilot. We, but it takes a lot of time to get ethical approval and all the technical platforms up and running. So we will um, proceed then with data collection in the first pilot now, and then we will have in-depth interviews and then we will have a second pilot testing the, all the digital systems and then finally we will include 100 uh, subjects with mild to moderate sleep apnea uh, from the end of next year hopefully. So I think in the symp symposium on Tuesday morning uh, the most uh, interesting part is that we have um, uh, participants in the sy symposium uh, with focus on uh, medication th uh, therapy on uh, sleep apnea and more general exercises not focused like my functional therapy uh, and also uh, Winfred Randrath will uh, give a presentation on so sort of the 3D model and the overall concept of non-CPAP treatment for sleep apnea because we know that approximately 25% of sleep apnea patients do not tolerate uh, a CPAP. So it's really a large need for non-CPAP therapies. But we really need to find out how to phenotype these patients uh, and we need alternatives. And I think for the patients motivated to do focused training, but not necessarily motivated to go out running or, or doing more general exercise, this kind of treatment will be uh, optimal. And we want to, uh, to include uh, newly diagnosed uh, patients, uh, because we think that if you already have experienced uh, CPAP failure, uh, you're less motivated to, to start with this treatment. So we will include uh, newly diagnosed patients in this study. So I think uh, when we have rev reviewed the literature, uh, we identified um, some limitations in the previous studies. Uh, as I said, uh, intention to treat uh, has not been uh, followed uh, as a principle in the previous studies. Um, and also it uh, is a problem with long-term um, follow-up. 
Uh, we will have our outcome assessment after three months, uh, but we will have an open label uh, follow-up study if we can get funding for that also in, in, in our study. The final thing we lack in previous studies uh, is blinded outcome assessment. So that means that the same therapist has uh, evaluated the outcome as the one treating patients. So we will uh, change that by doing a separate evaluation by one uh, researcher and then uh, delivering the treatment by another researcher. So then we can have a more blinded uh, design than previous studies. So of course we hope that this study, this large study, it's twice as big as the biggest, second biggest study, will show effect, uh, but uh, we're curious about that. I think the most crucial thing to clarify before we start including patients is how to phenotype uh, the participants. Because we, as soon as we include, we will follow them through the whole three month period. So, uh, but, but we really think that not all sleep apnea patients uh, will uh, be uh, have benefits from this kind of treatment. So obviously, uh, if patients are motivated, that will be the most uh, essential uh, phenotype. But of, of course, we, we also think that uh, uh, people need to be na uh, able to breathe through their nose. Uh, we think that uh, if they're mouth breathers, uh, it will be hard to uh, do these exercises if it's a mechanical uh, stop in the nose. And, uh, and we also consider to use uh, um, uh, cephalometry uh, or uh, PSG-based endotyping. But uh, we haven't concluded on that yet.